what happens to the spirit of a people when you take the dignity away from the people from which they come. So if you're expecting people to pull themselves up by their bootstraps or you're expecting people to um, create some sort of sense of empowerment within themselves, when you've cut off one of the significant sense, you know, strains of power that where they could draw some strength from, I, I don't think that's fair to expect that from people. Lincoln Cemetery was the black cemetery. Um, there was a time when white folks and black folks could not be buried in the same area. The Lincoln Cemetery was Carlisle's burial ground for, for blacks. And um, I, in the 60s, the late 60s and early 70s, um, the tombstones were removed and um, the borough took ownership of the property and um, made it into a municipal park. Um, in that triangular piece of land, the green space um, with its mounds and trees is where the cemetery was. And then the active play area where the playground and equipment and basketball courts and uh, Hope Station is, um, was part of the train station and train land. Love and respect the Miss Fleeta. That Miss Fleeta Jordan had her ancestors. Oh, Michael had Jordan! More. Her ancestors. Yeah. She went to court. Saint Jordan, from the So Fleeta Jordan was my great grandmother. Uh, she lived at uh, 128 West Penn Street, and she petitioned the court to have her tombstone remain in the park when it was um, converted from a cemetery to a park. She was born and raised in Carlisle. And she was uh, from the Thompson family. And somebody that um, was known for um, being engaged in the community and um, speaking out and speaking up for uh, people of color. From the time that uh, Lincoln becomes defunct and the Union is open. Um, really, Lincoln just sits empty. And presumably there are still family members around from recent burials that had taken place there. But by the time you get to the 1960s, it's basically an overgrown cemetery that nobody's really caring for because it's not within the ownership of anybody. So you have a petition that's written to the borough asking the borough to take ownership of the cemetery. They're already in ownership of what we now call the old Carlisle Cemetery on the other side of town. And I think the idea behind the petition was this is a defunct piece of property. It, it needs to revert back to the municipality. And that's what ends up happening is the borough takes ownership of it. Um, we have a copy of that petition in our files, just them asking council to take it over. So by 1970, they have ownership for the most part of this piece of, this piece of property. The borough has pictures of those tombstones coming down. Um, Which they, are on a Dickinson website as yes. well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They were not destroyed at that time. Uh, the borough held on to them for several decades, I want to say. I don't know, at least a decade. Mm -hmm. um, and then eventually, they're just, well, they're not coming back. One of the questions that we're asking is, um, were the bodies relocated to another place? So when they, the borough took ownership of it, uh, how likely is it that they exhume the bodies and move them someplace else, right? So not very likely. Um, so the fact that, um, that there are bodies of um, not only individuals that fought in the Civil War, uh, but also individuals who fought um, just the injustices of everyday life, of being a person of color 
in this community. So um, to be robbed of your dignity in your life during your lifetime is, is awful. Um, to be robbed of that dignity again in death um, is also significant. The Carolina community, it's always been, um, there's always been that touch of segregation, but it's been subtle. I will always remember Carlisle for doing things um, in a certain way with a certain mindset so that things that they do are legal, things that they do are by the letter of the law, but they're done in a way oftentimes without the best interest of communities of color. When they laid out the 10th Carlisle, the boundaries, the original boundaries were the directional streets, so north, south, east, and west. And if you look at that plot map and you look at where the White Cemetery is and you look at where Lincoln Cemetery is, they're in the opposite ends of town, about as far away from each other as possible. And that cemetery is also on probably what was the worst piece of land at the time, um, as far as where water drains and other things, a little swampy. Um, so it probably was a space that no one cared about that they started using for the purpose of burying. Our goal ought to be to recommission the space as a sacred space but continue to give the community what it is that they need. The people buried there were a very important part of our community. They helped build this town, um, rightly or wrongly, in whatever capacity they were here. Um, slaves built the old original courthouse. Slaves built Dickinson. They were here and they were important, um, and their descendants were as well. And we can't recognize that because the cemetery is not there anymore. So I want to create something that remembers them um, and remembers their you know, importance to this town. I believe that there's something that happens to the spirit of a people when you take their ancestry away from them. And I think that that, to a degree, is what has happened. Um, so not only were the headstones removed, but we're kind of trying to put the borough into a position where they have to tell us, were they destroyed? Where, where are they? Um, it's not enough to have the names, right? But we need to just be clear on what it is that actually took place.